Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video looking at everything you need to know on isotopes and the periodic table. Okay, we're on to the periodic table part of the video. So there are a few things that you need to know about the periodic table. Number one being metals are on the left of our zigzag here and non-metals are on the right, with the exception of hydrogen. Hydrogen is a non-metal, you just need to learn that one. You also need to know the names of the groups. So group one is your alkali metals, group seven is your halogens, and group zero at the end here is your noble gases. The rows going across are the periods, which show you the number of shells. Remembering the group tells you the number of electrons in the outer shell. Now the first person to come up with the idea of putting the elements into a table was Dmitry Mendeleev. Now what he did in the first place was he put all the elements into groups based on their chemical properties. And then later on, he realized that they would go up in order of atomic weight. Now this wasn't always the case and sometimes he needed to swap them around if they didn't actually fit the pattern. And if there was something that didn't match at all, he would leave gaps. The reason he did that is because there were undiscovered elements, ones that hadn't been found yet. Now there are some similarities between Mendeleev's periodic table and ours. Nice and simply, ours are still in groups based on properties. However, we now know that it goes up in order of atomic number, the small number. And then the final thing Mendeleev could do, when he left gaps, he would look at the elements above and below in the periodic table. So for example, if the element above had a melting point of 27 and the one below had 100 degrees, he would be able to predict the properties of the undiscovered elements. So he would go, right, okay, 27, 100, about halfway in between, and he'd predict it was around 70. And he was pretty close with most of his estimations. Now, you'll have also noticed on your periodic table, there are elements that have unwhole numbers. So for example, chlorine, that's the most famous example. It has a relative atomic mass of 35.5. Now that relative atomic mass is the average mass of all the isotopes. So there are lots of different isotopes of chlorine, the two main ones being chlorine-35 and chlorine-37, of which there's 75% of chlorine-35 and 25% of chlorine-37. So the definition of an isotope is it's something that has the same number of protons. So both these chlorines down here have got 17 protons, but a different number of neutrons. The one on the left has 18 neutrons and the one on the right has 20 neutrons. The next thing you do need to be able to do, regardless of the paper you're sitting, is work out the relative atomic mass for an isotope. Now to do that, all you need to do is take the mass number, multiply it by the percentage of the isotope, and divide by 100. You do that for all the isotopes, and then you add them together. So for example, our chlorine atom, you take our 35, you multiply it by the 75%, so 35 times 75, and you divide it by 100. You do the same with chlorine 37. So 37 times by the percentage, which is 25, divide that by 100. Then when you add all that together, it comes to 35.5. A nice and simple calculation, as long as you can remember the two steps needed. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.